this team. My name's Tom Howarth. Uh, why am I here? Because apparently I know a little bit about Ashikor Packer. And uh, what I'm hoping to do is give you a little bit of knowledge so you can <clears throat> easily create your your images. What I'm hope what I was hoping today to do today was to actually go through the full process of deploying a Windows server it, with using HashiCore Packer, deploying it into HCP. Unfortunately. Uh, I seem to have neglected to do the ritual slaughtering of the sacrificial beasts to the demo gods, and they've been e evil and nasty to me. And my build is failing to register the, the R WinRM clients, which I think may be down to the corporate VPNs. So without further ado, I will start the call the so as i've said i've already gone through why i've got an opinion a little bit of knowledge on it a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing as i keep getting told but what is packer pack is an open source piece product from HashiCore, it's one of their hidden gems. I really suggest you have a look at it. It is basically Terraform for images. It allows you to write code to deploy your virtual images, you know, be those Linux, be those Windows-based machines, and put them into a repository for building out it's actually a really powerful tool. And what we're going through today is only going to skirt the surfaces. Currently, there's two ways to pass your parameters into Packer. You can use JSON or you can use HCL2. HCL2 is very familiar for those people who are used to HashiCore because the the format is very, very similar to the language that's used in Terraform. <clears throat> and JSON is just JSON. So JSON works. It's got a couple of foibles. Um, as we know, variables are only limited to strings. We can have there's no validation of variables. It can run in parallel, and it uses builders to define the machines. If you look at that, you can see a lot of the things that are needed to actually deploy a machine. It's very, very familiar. and very you know, So you've got your image off offers, you've got your SKUs, you've got your WinRMs, et cetera, et cetera. Again, with HCL, it looks very familiar. It follows the same rules as Terraform, very familiar syntax. One of the good things is you can use variables other than strings. So you can use maps, you can use lists, booleans, and you can also add validation into those variables to make sure that what you're putting in makes sense. Unlike the builder variable, we now have a source variable uh, code block rather than a builder's block that we had with JSON. JSON, I would say, is probably legacy now. If you are starting out, I would suggest that you build out using HCL. If you already do use Packer and you have some old json images you can actually convert those images with any version of packer further than 1.6 not 1.7 i think which will actually convert your json code straight into native hcl
as we said, we can have numerous types of variables. So we can have lists, we can have strings, maps, booleans, we can set defaults, we can put in uh, validation and the criteria that goes into those validation. Basically, everything you can do with a Terraform variable, you can do with your pack of variables. It's a lot more powerful, a lot more friendly. It makes your the ability to dry out your code significantly easier. <clears throat> you can have sensitive strings in there. Now, the thing with Packer is there is no state file. It's not like, like Terraform where that's confirmed. It just runs the script and there's nothing left at the end. So you don't really need to worry about that too much. But I put it in there because I don't want it appearing. As I said, JSON blocks have been replaced with builders. So JSON builders have been replaced with source blocks that allows you to have all sorts of wonderful things. You see here, we've got halfway house of drying out our builders block. So we've got variables for resource groups, variables for our client IDs, secrets, subscriptions, and tenants. And you will see that I've put in, in under manage image name, we have the server name followed by V string var version. It's more about that a little bit later on, but that's to do with HCP. Provision is where all the fun is. The builder block just takes the image and builds a vanilla and quite honestly useless machine. What the provisioners do is it allows you to install your applications, install features, set up your environments, do things like change, get rid of admin, admin users, rename accounts, and also sysprep and generalize it to be sealed. So it actually makes it a useful template. As you can see in this code, we have the build. We've got sources that takes the code that we had from our source block. And then WinRM will run in Palarel, in PowerShell, these commands once it gets there. Now, if you're using HCP, which I would suggest that you do. It's part and parcel of the HashiCore's cloud presence. And what HCP Packer does is that it gives you the ability to build up an image library and pass that directly through to your Terraform builds, either using the OSS version or using the integration into Terraform cloud so that you can continually update your underlying images with your builds and then your pipelines on creation of a new build if you so desire can automatically upgrade the underlying images of your environments to the latest and greatest builds <clears throat> the code for this is fairly fairly simple it creates an entry in your packer registry with a description, a name, who the owner are, what your OS is, what the version is, and it has the build time and the build source. Now the source name is the direct link back to your GUID of where your image has been built in Azure. So to put it all together, it's fairly simple. It's a simple creation of 
a standard script, HCL then on the end. You have to have your HCP secret and your client ID. Now to get them, you need to go into into uh, into your HCP portal. Just bear with me one second. The <clears throat> HashiCore secret ID and the HashiCore cli client ID and the HashiCore secret ID are created with HCP. They are created as variables, which you export into your environment. I use uh, WSL in Windows as my deployment environment of choice. So you would add these into your, your environment in your uh... so here is a copy of my code environment This is not turning out to be a good day. Please bear with me. And here we can see all the code built together. In the environment, here's our HCP environment. And what has been happening with this, unfortunately, is when I do my code deployment, it will fail at the WinRM. So if we go and create our HCP environment here, And we create our, so we have to go export. Client ID equals now what you will see my HCP credentials, but by the time you get to use them, they will have been changed. And we put the secret in. And then we put in the fingerprint. Now, if you are already attached and got your code up in Git, you will already have this set within your environment. But it's basically a random set of characters that has to be less than 32. So now we have that set up. We will run Packer in it. So as we don't have any upgrades and we're already currently up to date, that's fine. And we do a pack of format. That makes sure that your file is correct, and it is. And the final thing to do is a packer build. 
The dot signifies just to run the HCL file from within this directory. You can actually enter um, a full path to it if you wish in a full path to the file name. Well, that's another new error. As I said, I am not having a good day today. So it helps if I actually put the correct one in. So what we see here now is Packer creating. And what it will be doing now is nice little things like going out, out to Azure. It will be setting up and checking that we have everything set up. So while that is doing that, I will... move over to show you what is happening in in the azure portal So this is now the first proof that we've got something working. So that's all shiny and brand new. And if we go right back to our code, once it's once we have got to the stage where the first deployment is done, we will get our my wonderful error on my WinRM. Unfortunately, this has not been as slick as I wanted it to be but it does actually work. We have to wait five minutes after the, when, after the code comes up to say that um, waiting for WinRM which is a surprisingly long time when you're just waiting for, for everything. Now, I'm not sure if I can take questions while we're waiting, but I'm available to if need be. Do we have the ability to take questions? If not. Yeah, we can do questions. 
So yep. let's see. Let me just go through through chat, right? So there's a lot of people excited about Packer, and I 100% agree because it's one of those workhorse products that just does great work, but it's not as fancy as Terraform is. Um, like besides spinning up windows or creating windows images, do you provision anything else like with it? Yeah, provision uh, CentOS images, Ubuntu images, Red Hat images, uh, flavors of Windows 16, 19, 22. Used to do 2008, 2012, but not anymore. Um, various flavors of, of Linux, practically everything, practically any flavor you can get, I think you can actually, there's a builder built into Packer. I think there's currently 18, 18 to 20 different builders off the top of my head, which means that there's a lot of, a lot of different applications that you can <clears throat> build uh, image templates for and if you are with with the move to hcl it's even easier because you can actually with with the need with the ability to have extra uh, variables in terms to in terms of booleans and and lists and, and maps and things now you can actually build out some fairly complex environments and build out and integrate it into your pipelines for a continual upgrade of your backend images. This is really good for things like uh, AVD or uh, workspaces in <clears throat> workspaces in AWS or or Citrix or RDS deployments. Okay. Uh, speaking of uh, AWS, someone uh, Oliver was asking, how do you push the image uh, to AWS AMI? I know the answer, <laughs> but go ahead. Uh, basically, you have a different builder code up here at the top. So where you see here, we have our source. And an AWS one, there is an, it would basically be source AWS AMI. I've a while since I've done AWS. I've been working with uh, Azure practically 100% for the last 18 months. So my AWS is a little bit rusty. <clears throat> but if I can find, there's like I, I I think the easiest way to answer it is right is Packer basically takes care of it for, for you, you, right? Like as as soon as the image is built. Um, it is an AMI that is then available, which is really nice because yeah, that's one of the things you don't is. have to think about. Yeah. And the same as once Packer has built the Azure one, it is an Azure image. Yeah. You know, um, and someone and is the asking... same with VMware as well. It, you know, it will build a VMware template for you. Okay. Um, and someone is asking, uh, does it work with Azure Virtual Desktop as well? Yes, it does. And thank you, Mark, for that. I'll have to shout at him afterwards because he's one of my work colleagues. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, it, it does work with Azure Virtual Desktop. Um, all you're doing at the end of the day is creating the image that the session managers take as their as their their desktops. So this creates this basically creates the image that is used by Terraform, used by AVD, used by Nerdio, et cetera, et cetera, to deploy their environments. Okay. Thanks. Any I th more I questions? Think, I think that's it for questions. I think we're on schedule, so I'd like to hand it over to Gila. Okay. Thank you, and goodbye. Cool. So thank you, Tom. I'm sure that this uh, use case you introduced would be very useful to our audience. And in terms of the demo, I don't think there's one uh, people here or in the crowd that has everything works seamlessly, right? Uh, failures and debugging is part of the 
of the issue, so uh, or, uh, part of our jobs. So what it, what, it, what it teaches me to do is to have a video in place of a vid of a live video. <laughs> yes, screen recording of the demo would be also a good thing as a backup. But I personally always even learn from these kind of uh, sessions because you see er errors that maybe you wouldn't have seen otherwise. So I think we can learn from everything uh, in life and also from these kind of ses sessions. So thank you so much, Tom. Failing hard. That's what I've done today. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Thanks for Thank you very much. Bye.